Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Close and I'm an, I'm an Amanga woman from the Pitindata and Yankundata language groups in the AP Lands in Central Australia in the middle of the desert. I have been an, a professional contemporary artist for just over a decade. A lot of my work is uh, started on canvas, um, but in the last, sort of last sort of couple couple of years, I've been doing more collaborations with with companies and com being commissioned to produce artwork that's going onto clothing or documents and you know other things like that. Uh, well, I do what I do because I think it's important, and I think that art is you know. For, first and foremost, it's like one of the most important ways that we as Aboriginal people can, you know, share knowledge and culture and stories. But it's also a really important medium, I think, for, for showcasing, you know, our lived experience and, and sharing that with, you know, a global audience. A lot of my influences come from, or well, came originally, um, I started painting after the death of my grandmother, who was one of the most significant people in my life. Um, and she was a very creative woman and taught me to paint and draw and, and things like that and so I tapped into that after she, she passed away and when um, my family and I sort of moved back to country I worked alongside some of the you know these incredible artists in in the APY lands that just the, the scale and the immensity and the importance of the, the knowledge that they're sharing through their art is just amazing. So, you know, I draw my influence from women like women like those women. I can't underline the importance of, of how we can share our lived experience and our culture. You know, we are the longest, oldest surviving culture on the planet and for us to be able to share that and put that on canvas and put that in song form or dance form or, you know, in the form of plays and, and other things, you know, being an artist in Aboriginal space I think is incredibly important for, you know, increasing our visibility more broadly across, you know, the Australian sort of societal narrative, I guess. I just think that it's fantastic to see companies like BW Tribal particularly because they, you know they're hundred percent indigenous owned and so you know that's that's not just about you know selling Aboriginal art. That's about you know taking Aboriginal art and putting it out into the public realm for you know everyday Australians to buy but it's also about like you know employing Aboriginal people at that level and it's about you know empowering Aboriginal people to, to work, at, you know, in, in fields where, you know, there isn't a lot of representation. So I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to put that artwork in, you know, in, in a form that's accessible to everyone. And while you're doing that, empowering Aboriginal people through the use of Aboriginal art, increasing their visibility, but then also, you know, employing Aboriginal designers, Aboriginal tech people, Aboriginal marketers, Aboriginal, um, you know, accountants, you know, things like that, doing what you can to empower the people around you. And I think that that's probably the key point, And that's something I feel really strongly about is building our brothers and sisters up. And uh, yeah, so I'm like, really excited about the uh, this year's NADOC uh, designs and the couple of other artists that they've used. Their designs are just stunning and they've, you know, the team has worked really, really well to be able to, you know, take those designs and then vectorise them and make them, turn them into an art form that everyone can wear.